So my story starts when I got my first contract for my first ever job in the city of London. I just turned 20 years old. And it felt like a million interviews and about a gazillion sleepless nights. And I finally landed it. So I was proud. I called my father. And my father listened to what I had to say. I had a lot of questions to ask him. I asked him about my contract, differences in terms of vocabulary that I had never seen before. What's the difference between life insurance, life assurance, all of that grown-up stuff? You see, my dad was always my trusted advisor and still is. He graduated from Cambridge with a PhD, and he was definitely the most cautious and ap academic one in the family. Um, so after listening to me ramble about all these questions, he comes back to me with one suggestion. And that one suggestion was, Francis, contribute as much as you can to your pension. So I listened intently, but I didn't really get his sense of urgency at the time. And as a result, I waited for a few months. And when I got that pension enrollment paperwork through in the post, I had some choices to make. What I got was one list, and that list just had a few different mutual funds on it. And my task was to pick those mutual funds for my future. Having reviewed the list once, twice, three times, I found something very odd about this list. It did not contain one woman. And the fact was, is that when my eyes were on that list, I was angry. In fact, I was livid. I was livid because I'd worked so hard at school and a university, and I wanted the career in this industry. And that piece of paper told me that I could not do this. <clears throat> So then I decided I'm going to go and research the kind chaps that were on that list. And I didn't. They seemed like trustworthy individuals. They seemed like the type of people that I could trust. They had that gray hair factor rocking. They were definitely the type of people that seemed responsible, that seemed that they could help me with what I wanted to do. So I decided I was going to research them and learn about everything that they did. And then I also decided that I was going to call the pension fund manager because I thought that they would be able to give me this answer. Why was there not one woman on that list? So instead of stay, staying silent and crying about it, I thought I would come to you today with a grand total of two gray hairs and a lot, <laughs> and a lot of research and a lot of statistics shown. So I would share with you my four reasons as to why I believe the world needs more female money managers. <clears throat> My first reason, and probably the most controversial out of all of the reasons there are, is that we are fearful. I'm fearful today coming up and standing here in front of you. But let me just go through the pros and cons of fear. So the cons at the surface, at least stepping away for a second from fund management and looking at fear as a whole, is that women are described as more fearful creatures. Why? Well, lab studies show that when we see one of those, we're more scared than a man is. <laughs> OK, but in the context of fund management, being fearful is totally a positive thing. What does that mean? Well, I'm not saying that men aren't fearful. I'm saying more that men are better at concealing their fears than women are, especially in fund management. What I've seen is that investors love this characteristic. They love that person that exudes excitement and power and certainty. They love that person that can answer all of their questions. They love that person that thinks that they are always right. Now, that's OK. But what I found is actually that sense of overconfidence leads you to overtrade. It leads you to take more risk. So as an investor, ask yourself a question. Do you prefer fear or do you prefer hubris? Being fearful for a foreseen market bubble or for a crisis can actually be a great thing because it translates into two things. One, risk aversion. Two, a lovely thing I like to call smart caution. Well, I can now back it up. Because the fact is, is that I've recounted it many times. I looked at four different studies, and the studies were all shouting the same thing at me. What they were shouting was, is that women outperform. In many instances, we look at this just from a window view. All studies took 2006 to 2011 into account. And here you see that women outperform by 4% from their male peers. That was one of the four studies. The conclusion is also very much seen in day traders, and the same thing happens. Men tend to overtrade, and hence their performance gets dubbed down. 
So the flip side of fear for me is that lovely thing called smart caution. Sometimes it totally pays to be fearful because fear can actually convert into performance. That's reason number one. Reason number two is that we are emotionally intelligent. Emotional intelligence is a combination of skills, attitudes, and habits that distinguish superior performance. It's normally divided into two strands. When we look at emotional intelligence, we normally look at the first strand, which is self-awareness, what you think about yourself, and the second strand is what you understand about the world around you. In investment management, emotional intelligence, is, it, will, it will set you apart from the crowd. It is the key driver to investment success. Don't underestimate it. Coincidentally, Warren Buffett himself also practices emotional intelligence. So let me start with a little example. Back in the day, uh, it was in 2006, and there once was, it, was this shoe brand, Imagine a Shoe. It was the most hideous shoe that you would have ever seen. It was just ugly. There were no other words for this shoe. <laughs> so I was sitting at my desk, and I used to get loads of phone calls about this shoe brand. And they came on and on and on and on. And I thought, wow, everybody loves this shoe. But frankly, I don't really get it. So then I asked my friends, would you buy the shoe, the brand, the company, the balance sheet? Would you buy any of this? And they turned around and they said, no. I really just don't like it. And I thought, OK. And then what happened was that there was a private equity firm. And the private equity firm loved this shoe brand again. And all of us were just nodding our heads going, who wears these shoes? <laughs> so you asked the whole entire world of women around the shoes. And they said, nah, never invest. Let's just look at the stock's performance for a second. This is a perfect example of the unemotional, intel uh, unemotional investor. What it tells you is that if you would have bought it in 2006 and you would have sold it in 2015, you would have made diddly squat, nothing, nada, nothing. <laughs> what does that mean? That, my friends, is the crux of emotional intelligent investing. <laughs> it means that you are looking at EQ rather than IQ. In fact, you're merging the two together to make the right investment decisions, OK? So what that means for me is that you're always looking around the market and understanding exactly what is going on and exactly what people are thinking to make your investment decisions. And that's what women thrive at. We prosper at this. Another thing that I've seen in the industry of late is something called robo-advice. Robo-advice is not a robot, but it is a digital type of investment advice. Uh, it's based around algorithms, and what it is is that it's been one of the largest growing types of investment advice the world has ever seen. And what this, invest, what this type of advice does is it incorporates everything from a historical pricing perspective, but what it should do and what will make it a million times better is if it incorporates EQ, emotional intelligence, altruism, in order to really get the next generation investor. If it manages to do that, we are, in, are going to be in a great place with great options in the future. So in light of this, another trend that I've seen so far that women are really taking to is something called gender lens investing. Gender lens investing is really understanding and going through that altruistic state, understanding that where you put your money will make for a better world in the next 5, 10, 20 days, years, months, centuries. That is gender lens investing. And what I've seen is that we have, as women, as the portfolio managers, we have driven this style of investing. So the future for me looks really bright. Reason being is that it's going to combine all of these fantastic things, the digital elements, the gender lens elements, as well as the EQ elements, and being more emotionally intelligent when we make our investment decisions. That is my reason number two. Reason number three is that we are overqualified. That sounds really brash, doesn't, doesn't it? But let me tell you why. All right. So now from 2010 to 2011, more female undergraduates are in the UK than there are men. So that's about 55% versus 45%. A good in indication in the portfolio management space is really to look under the hood of this certain designation called the CFA, which is the Chartered Financial Analyst designation. I know a few of you are um, on your way there here in the room, or you might have tried or attempted a few of the exams. So 
The Chartered Financial Analyst designation is a well-known qualification. And what it does is that it prepares you in the world of money markets or in the world of finance to become a portfolio manager. In fact, 22% of the entire membership are portfolio managers today. So according to Bloomberg, in the same year, well, in 2013, I had a look at the numbers. And what I found was that in the UK, up to about 8,000 of these people are here in the UK and that are working in financial markets. 19% of the 8,000 are women. So that means around 1,500 1, 1, uh, 1, now currently hold the designation here, OK? If we were then to go back a step and assume that the 22%, we could overlay that number over, and that will give you the number of portfolio managers in the UK. It's a rough estimate, but, but you know, work with me on this one. So that means, what, 350 women are portfolio managers in the UK. Sounds OK. Sounds kind of right. That's wonderful, you might be thinking. But then why, oh why, oh why, can I only find 130 female hedge fund managers or minority-owned funds in the entire world? 350, 130, what is the problem? Well, equally, looking at some other statistics, I found that only 2% of funds are managed by women in the US. 2% of the entire fund management industry are managed by the US, in the US. That, for me, is startling. So how can we explain this dichotomy? Number one is that we quit too early. Money management just isn't cool. After speaking to a load of women in diversity groups and the like, what I found is that there are too many barriers here. There are too many barriers in the workplace. They start at being political, emotional, family driven. And many of us use these to help us stop reaching our potential. Despite millions of companies, schools, networks that work with us in order to make and create potential careers, we fail. That's the first part of the problem. The second part of the problem is we don't educate young girls. And that means that there is a lack of familiarization when we talk to young girls. When we ask young girls, what is a stock? What is a bond? What is a portfolio? What is a fund? How do you save your money? They do not know, because we do not teach them. And we need to start early. And when I mean early, I'm talking about life skills on steroids. I'm talking about understanding in schools, at homes, and educating our women about the basics around money management. The benefits of the wider financial markets and understanding the wider financial markets allows girls to process potential career opportunities very early. And you know what? It gives them the opportunity to decline if they don't want to. But at least let's give them that opportunities. As a girl, you want to be a chef. You want to be a singer. You want to be a dancer. You want to be all these great things. And then after A-levels, all you can think about is I need to pass the exam. I'm going to go to pass the exam. I don't care about what I'm learning. I just need to pass, 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 OK? <laughs> Talk to me after the exam. You've been there. We've all been there. OK. And then after that, when we're female undergraduates or we've just finished university, we get told things like, oh, if you want, if you want to run money, you need to be part of a special club. That means you need to be white. That means that you need to be middle-aged. That means that you need to be rocking that gray-haired factor. You don't have it, you're not coming in. <laughs> you need to be super wealthy. You need to be the smartest of the smart in order to get here. Or the worst that I have heard so far is that you need to have as much testosterone <laughs> and be as aggressive as Jordan from The Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> Let me tell you right here, right now, those things are all fiction. Total fiction. What it is, is that you, when you meet a female manager in the flesh, what you find is that they are real people. You can talk to them about everything. Yes, they're smart, but they're not superhuman. Let's take everybody off the pedestal and figure out that everybody has the opportunity to look into this industry and really start and make a career for themselves here. So that is reason number four. On to the next, is that we are more economically empowered than ever. Yes, we are getting richer. As women, we definitely are bringing home bank, and that's the good news. But as rich as we get, we look at the numbers, and we find that 
actually two thirds of private wealth in the US is now held by women. What we're gonna see in the next 30 years is the largest intergenerational transfer of wealth the world has ever seen. Is that just not the best thing you've ever heard? But guess what, that was the good news. <laughs> the bad news is as follows. The bad news is really of the fact that if you aren't super wealthy, is that you may not have enough money to sustain your life into retirement. What do I mean about this? I mean that currently we have flat interest rates. That means if you're saving money, it's not really bringing you that far and it's not gonna bring you to your future. Nobody's caught on to this, it seems. And even worse than that is if you believe what you read and you aren't thinking wrong, that if you haven't saved enough now, you are going to find yourself with an empty national pension pot. Because guess what? What we're going through is bailouts, financial crisis, we're living longer, thank God, we're healthier, thank God. But that might mean that you might not have enough money to sustain the rest of your lives. So equally to that, you probably are not contributing as much as you need to into your pension. In the UK, 29% of women, only 29% of women that are now employed out of the 29 million are contributing to their pension. That means that there is an awareness gap. There's no other word for it. And that awareness gap is going to be something that female advisors will have the tools to now rectify. So it means if you haven't started saving now, please start. If you haven't gotten a financial advisor, please start. And seek out firms that employ diversity, that understand you, that can show you how to do this if you don't know. Come clueless, people will help you. That's the whole point. If you do now and you help somebody else, what will, will this, this will mean for all of us that we will hopefully not hit that empty when we all reach retirement or if we're already in retirement. So my four conclusions for you today are really simple. Four reasons. Number one, we are fearful, yet we outperform as female money managers. Number two, we are emotionally intelligent and we will drive gender lend investing. Number three, we are overqualified, and now is the opportune time to increase our presence in money management. Number four, we are emotion economically empowered, and we can translate this power into addressing women's poverty and retirement. Thank you very much, everybody, and I hope you have a fantastic day.